City Deep is the 11th film in the series of films which chronicle the history of Soho Eckstein, a man in Johannesburg, middle-aged man in Johannesburg. The first film was made over 30 years ago, so it in a way also chronicles my life in the studio over this period. And it has two elements to it. It has one element which is about the, which is set in the Johannesburg Art Gallery and the decline of that institution. And that's about really my memory of my of the art gallery as my childhood institution. The images of it are more how it used to look rather than how it looks um, at the moment. And the other part of the film is about the Zamazama Minus, which is a recent phenomenon in Johannesburg, that is to say from the last eight years. Many years ago I made a film, Mine, which was about the mining industry and Soho as an owner of mines, which was about deep underground mining and thousands of miners going down in a cage and coming up. It was about that world of Johannesburg. And we understand that's changed, that deep level mining, the number of people in the gold mining industry has declined dramatically, but what has grown is this artisanal miners, the end of a sort of a post-industrial mining. Instead of 40 tons being grabbed at a time by one huge cactus grab underground, you have people with hammers and screwdrivers in little foxholes on the surface of the ground trying to glean the last remnants of gold that were left behind by the big the big industry. And when I started thinking about the film many years ago and did, went out into the West Rand and East Rand filming these uh, artisanal miners, the Zama Zama, there were a few, there were not that many. But now, even as you drive on the highway around the back of Johannesburg on the M2, where the Top Star drive-in used to be, you'll see dozens and dozens of people digging in what seems like a wasteland, but still hoping to find gold. In the place where the very first gold was discovered by, was it George Harrison or George Honeyball or one of those in the first gold mining started, those same mines are being reworked for the minute amounts of gold that was left. And it's a new element to the city. There's, you know, there are stories, there's a whole mythology about it already that normally when you do mining you leave support rocks as you go along the stope to support the roof. And these are all being chipped away for the last gold underneath. And there's a thought that maybe the whole of Soccer City will suddenly sink four feet into the ground, a meter and a half into the ground, because of all the chipping away of these supports in the abandoned mines underneath, or mined out mines underneath um, Soccer City. But what the film means, what the relationship is between Soho looking at this hole in the ground, which has got a Zama Zama mining away in it, and the collapse of the art gallery, that that's not known in advance. And here, if I was to talk about it, would be my interpretation rather than what comes through. In the, in the art gallery, in the drawings in City Deep, um, there are a series of shelves on which there are objects. And in the film, you see those objects being made by the Zamazamas. But at the same time that I was making the film, I was working on a series of sculptures in my studio in town which were sculptures of words, of objects, of hieroglyphs, of glyphs as we call them. Like as if you could weigh a word. Here is a sculpture of an ampersand. Here is a sculpture of a simplified tree. And so on the one hand, there were sculptures being made, which will be on the exhibition, these series of, which, of small bronze sculptures. And they also came into the film as one of the elements in the, in the gallery. And that's done always without a real sense of what do they mean within the story, what do they mean within it. It means that the, the miners are not making Ashanti gold weights, which would have been another kind of artisanal mining, but they're making these, these words, these unspoken, inarticulate or uncertain words and phrases which are on the shelf. <laughs> In a strange way, the informal sector always subsidizes the formal sector. You think of all the people who collect and the recyclers. The informal recyclers who pull their trolleys through town at three in the morning on a Tuesday to the recycling depots. You have a big formal company, the recycling company, that is completely dependent on these informal, ununionized, unsupported uh, people 
gleaning the smallest living possible by gathering, going through the rich people's rubbish to take to the center. So there's a way in which the economy still works, but only through this mixture of um, a formal sector with proper health care, with support, and a kind of really hanging on by its teeth informal sector. Um, and if we understood that, they understood the way in which we are supported by that informal sector, we would have more time and more understanding of the people in it. I mean, the gold mines were always supported by the informal sector. The wages they paid for the miners meant they could pay very little because they were migrant miners and in the rural areas, their wives and children looked after themselves. Um, and in that way subsidized the making of the great mining houses. Been, I mean, Johannesburg has a history of imploding itself, of great buildings and Art Deco buildings being imploded, particularly 20 years ago when new buildings were still being built in the city. I mean, our Art Deco buildings are safe partly because there's such a decline in the inner city economy that it's not worth anyone demolishing them and building some new glass and steel structure. Um, but that sense of mine dumps being built and then erased and reprocessed and buildings coming and going um, is part of the animation of Johannesburg as an, an, a city in animation.